Psalms 137. This is a psalm of them being in Babylon. As we read in Jeremiah, they're about to be taken. They're going to Babylon. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remember Zion, Jerusalem. They're in mourning. They're, because of their sins, they are out of the land. They are in Babylon. They are in captivity now. And it's, the 70 years have started. We hanged our harps which were used for joy. Remember, this is, this is a song book of the Bible. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Uh, so we know that there are willow trees in Babylon. And they took up the, the instruments of joy and just hung them up. And, and it's interesting, there's a note I have here about willows, that there are some species that contain cyanolic, I'm saying it wrong because it's a science word. Acid. A aspirin. Where aspirin comes from. This is a note there. For there they, Babylon, that carried us, Jerusalem, Israel, Jews, Judah, away captive, required of us, the Jews, a song. And they that wasted us, the Babylonians, Required us, the Jews, mirth, that means noise, joy, choir, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Making fun of them. Sing one of those songs. Now that you're not there, you're in our land. Our army has defeated you. Sing one of them songs. And their answer is, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Yeah, come on, let's sing it up now. All your sins, and, and you've been warned by all the prophets. Come on, sing now. Listen, there was a Babylonian soldier that walked up to Jeremiah and said, There's a problem. God told me to come and get you guys because of your sins. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can you sing the Lord's song when you're in the world and you don't belong in the world? I'll tell you how you do it. You take the world and you put the song into the Lord. You call it whatever you want to call it, but it's music that, that can please the world and please the Christian, if you want to say that. If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning, not be able to play anymore. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Silent, dumb. And this is exactly what happens to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 3.26. The Lord makes him unable to speak. Let me not be able to play the harp, the instruments of ten strings, and let me not be able to sing if I can't remember you. Remember, Jerusalem was the time in the Old Testament, the place that you were, the Jews were to look to. We don't look to a place today. We don't look to a mountain. We don't look to a hill. We don't look to a church building or a place. We look to heaven. We are seated in heavenly places. For the Jew of the Old Testament, it was to be that city that God says, if you are away or if you're in Babylon, Daniel, open up your window and pray towards Jerusalem. That is not us today. Gee, I wonder where religions get their pilgrimages. The Hindus, the Muslims, and all that got to go through this mountain and all that. You got it right out of the Bible. You stole it from God. Now we're to look to Jesus Christ who is seated on heavenly places. So it's it's silent, dumb. And like I said, Ezekiel. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Well, they don't know that Jerusalem is destroyed. Nehemiah says, when I got report from Ezra's returning and all that, what had happened there? He went before the king completely disfigured. That the king said to him, what are you, sick? They don't know. Remember, there's no photographs, no you know newspaper pictures or anything like that.
Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. In the day of Jerusalem. Who said, raise it, raise it. Even to the foundation thereof. And raise means to level, to overturn, to bear waste. And if you want to read the accounts like that, you study Obadiah. When the children of Jerusalem and Babylon is attacking there, there are Jews that run towards Edom. And Edom kills them or turns them back over to Babylon. They'll bring them by the herds. You know, hey, look what we caught for you guys. And you'll find the whole story and the curse brought upon Edom and Obadiah. And that raise it, raise it, bear it waste to the foundation. Destroy that city, they're saying. Raise it, raise it. Well, I remember one time that there was a shout to crucify him, crucify him. Old daughter of Babylon. Now we're going to get into prophecy. Talking to Babylon. Has to say daughter of Babylon because Babylon is conquered during Daniel's time. And it really ceases to be Babylon. Who are to be destroyed? You're going to be destroyed, Babylon. And it will be in Daniel's time. Happy shall he be, the person that destroys you. That rewardeth thee, Babylon, as thou hast served us. The golden rule, do unto others as others done unto you. What you did to Israel will be returned upon you. Where are the walls and the temples and the buildings of Babylon? They're gone. They are destroyed. That is prophecy. Not even 70 years is that prophecy fulfilled because it happens in Daniel's time. Daniel goes before Belshazzar and tells him the handwriting in the wall. And that night, the, 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 the kingdom is destroyed. Well, it's not the 70 years yet because 70 years, Ezra heads back with the people to go build the temple. Happy shall he be, the one that destroys the city. That taketh and dashes thy Babylon, little ones against the stones. We mentioned that the other night. It takes the Babylonian babies and, and destroys them on the stone. So guess what probably happened with the battle? But eventually they took babies and dashed them against the stones. Now Psalm 94. We'll read that goes with this tale here the tale of the destruction of Jerusalem eyewitness account one that was in Babylon and this would be an account O Lord God to whom vengeance belongeth O God to whom vengeance belongeth show thyself Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things? Remember they told him, go ahead, sing your songs. And all the workers of iniquity boast themselves. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thy heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger, the murder the fatherless. Remember they came in and destroyed all. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and ye fools, when will you be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? He that chases the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teaches man now, shall not he know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, that they are vanity. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, he's chasing a nation, and teaches him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity, unto, until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. He'll bring them back in the land. 
but judgment shall return unto the righteous, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who will stand up for the me against the workers in iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Speak to the roof of my mouth. When I say my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Remember the mercy we talked about? In the multitude of my thoughts, within me thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. Jeremiah was protected. He did right and God protected him. Matter of fact, it says in the end, after the siege, that he got a reward. But the Lord is my defense. My God is the rock of my refuge. He shall bring upon them their own iniquity. And what we read, the golden rule, it's going to happen to you, what you guys did to us, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. They had a party the night before. The city was destroyed. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off, and he does. That's an amazing little event there. So we, we see in the Psalms that there's also prophecy. We see in the song book, we see a tale of sadness and sorrow as their sins have brought them to a land that they do not need to be in. That's their condition today. They are in lands where they do not need to be in. They're supposed to be in the land. They're supposed to have a temple, but they don't. You think that... Jews in Daytona Beach, Florida, are singing the song of Jerusalem? Or are their harps hung on willow trees? And as I said, it, there's a, there's a containing of a thing that makes aspirin. And you take aspirin to give you for a big headache. When you about to have, when you when they you think you have a heart attack or that they'll give you a baby aspirin. It helps the blood to flow. It's amazing how they would mention that tree of all the trees. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds I have. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. 
Then I shall bow in humble adoration.